The Poco F5 needs no introduction. This phone came out 4 months ago, but right now I finally got my hands on it. So here are some things that I like about this phone and here are some that I really don't like so much. Let's go! The phone is made entirely out of plastic, but that's not necessarily a bad thing because it makes it pretty lightweight at 181 grams. I really like the white version with this frosty reflective uh, finish. And on the front you have a Gorilla Glass 5 that ensures great protection in my opinion, especially compared to some other devices out there. But hey, you can just slap on the case that comes with the phone and you don't have to worry about it anymore. There are dual speakers on the bottom and on the top and of course a headphone jack which I always love to see. Now you don't get the fancy in-screen fingerprint scanner but the one on the side definitely does the job and it's blazing fast as well. Poco didn't cut any corners when it comes to the display. It's a super bright AMOLED 68 billion colors display with HDR10 plus uh, support and 120Hz that can be adaptive so it can save you some battery as well. The maximum brightness is 1000 nits which is super bright so outdoors it will definitely be a pleasant experience unlike some other phones. The colors are super vibrant and punchy and I really love how this display looks but if you are not a fan of the vibrant colors you can always adjust them from the display settings and make them a little bit more natural. But hey, this phone is under $400 and the quality is just amazing for that price. Now the phone runs on Android 13 and BOI 14 on top of that. And what I love about Xiaomi phones in general is that they have super beautiful themes guys. I'm just showing you one of them but uh, there are so many options there and that's why I love Xiaomi. The 5000 mAh battery is sure to last you for at least one day and a half or even two days depending on your usage and with a 67 watt fast charging it's ready in like 30-40 minutes guys like from 0 to 60-70 in 30-40 minutes so you can't get better than that and inside this big boy here is the Snapdragon 7 Plus Gen 2 which is a really great CPU it's super powerful CPU and it obliterates every single other phone including the competitor of this, the main competitor of this device is actually the Samsung Galaxy A54. So let's see some benchmarks. At 1.1 million to 1.3 million Avantu 2 score, this phone comes super close to one of the flagships like the S23 Ultra or some gaming phones as well and the performance is simply amazing on this for the price. But there is a little bit of heating going on if uh, you strain the phone too much like with a specific game or some benchmark tests and such. But day to day multitasking, absolutely no issues at all, I have been super happy with this phone after around 2 or 3 weeks that I'm using it. And some interesting features here of the game booster that they have actually updated quite a lot since the last time I was using it with uh, one of my older Xiaomi phones. You can boost of course your games, you can do some multitasking, but they've actually added some uh, nice other features like a voice changer. I mean, I don't know who is gonna use the voice changer, but it sounds like a fun idea to me. And speaking of gaming, well, let's test that as well, right? Uh, so we are starting with the Genshin Impact and uh, this game actually runs super well. I didn't expect that game to run that well. I just had to adjust some settings in the menus there, set the shadows to low, set the bloom to off and everything else was set to high and uh, that's a stable 60 frames per second for you. It's just, it's just awesome to see that on such a cheap phone. Now if you play for hours and hours, uh, it's normal that the phone is gonna heat up uh, quite a lot, uh, but not to any dangerous levels, like the newest iPhone 15 that kind of has some overheating issues. Yikes. Here are some other games that I've tested on this phone and they hold up quite well, of course. Uh, we'll see about that in the future, but for now everything seems almost perfect to me.
Now I should mention that I got the 8GB RAM version of this phone, uh, but due to the fast UFC 3.1 storage, it can use some of the storage for additional RAM. Like, probably it's not the best solution, but if you think about it, you probably wouldn't be needing much more than 8GB anyway. If you find any value in this video, then I would really appreciate it if you like, comment and subscribe to my channel. That would really help me a lot to grow it. So thank you so much for sticking with me up until now and enjoy the rest of the video. Moving on to the cameras. So it's a 3 setup camera system. You have your main 64 megapixel lens followed by an 8 megapixel ultra wide and a 2 megapixel macro camera. Now some of the pictures I took were with the G cam and some of them were with the stock camera app of uh, the POCO and as you can see there's quite a bit of a difference uh, and in some scenarios the G cam actually performs better than the original Xiaomi camera but in some instances uh, the stock camera is actually quite better with more vibrant colors and the 64 megapixel shots can give you a little bit more details but if you use only the 12 megapixel options which is a normal one then that will definitely save you some storage. Now when it comes to low light and night time, now that's another story, the camera doesn't really perform so well during these periods but I still was able to capture some nice shots when I'm completely still and they're pretty usable, especially the portrait mode and I'm really happy with how the selfies come out. To sum it up, just use the 64 megapixel primary lens, it's gonna give you the best results then in some cases you can use the 8 megapixel ultra wide, but please just don't use the 2 megapixel macro. It's just <laughs> so bad, I don't know why they keep on including it. But moving on to the video recording and here I have some samples recorded in Full HD and in 4K. And so I actually installed Gcam primarily for that reason, I wanted to try the 4K 60fps video uh, recording and it works quite fine works fine. I just wanted to have the option in the stock camera but hey unfortunately Xiaomi decided to uh, not include it. Now if you want to check more examples of the video quality my last video is also recorded by the Poco F5 and in my opinion this phone can actually record super decent videos but in the pro mode of the camera not uh, point and shoot videos. But hey this phone is not meant for professionals it's meant for the average user and probably for the 95% of you. Uh, this is gonna be totally fine, but uh, moving on to a more low light scenario and here is where the sun actually started to uh, set and the video's quality dramatically dropped, uh, there is a lot more grain and noise, uh, but it's still usable, it's still very usable. The front facing camera's quality is more or less uh, on the same level as the back and with uh, just a little less details because of course there's less megapixels and when you switch to completely dark then here it's uh, almost unusable but it really depends on your situation so some of you guys might uh, find it okay personally i wouldn't go record videos during the night unless it's for fun but you know i couldn't expect more especially at this price point so i kind of like it but what do you guys think so there you have it guys, the POCO F5, I hope that you like this video and the phone as well. Please like, comment and subscribe down below, I would love to hear your opinions about this and have a nice day from me.